these two data analyst projects. This one followed every YouTube tutorial perfectly. Clean data, step-by-step -step instructions, and it took three weeks worth of work, but zero interview callbacks. And this one broke all the rules. Messy real-world synthetic data generated by AI, and instead of following a YouTube tutorial, it followed normal business practices. And boom, six interviews in two weeks. Wanna know the difference? Welcome to episode four of my killer data analyst portfolio series. Today, I'm walking you through the exact roadmap to build projects that hiring managers love. The ones that actually prove you can do the job before you get hired. If we haven't met before, hi, I'm Jess. My projects have helped me land multiple six-figure roles as a data analyst in tech, and I've also helped thousands of other people do the exact same. So before you even touch your next data project, you need to watch this video. Otherwise, you might waste days building something below average. The first thing you need to do is reverse engineer from real job postings, and that's how you're gonna choose your projects. Because you can build the most coolest and most interesting and most advanced project ever, but if it doesn't allow with what businesses are hiring for and where the industry is going, you're probably not gonna get hired. So you need to go through job postings for your industry and see what companies actually wanna hire for. And then you're gonna align all of your project ideas with those job requirements. And of course, there are two sides of this. You can look at what tools companies are hiring for, but also what business problems those companies are trying to solve. And that's the business domain part that's really gonna help you stand out. So it's not really about building the most advanced, most impressive project ever. It's more about being able to align your skills and experience with what the industry and that specific company is looking for. Because you wanna make it super easy for the hiring manager and really connect the dots to show them that you can easily join the team and work on the business problems that their team is working on. So for example, let's look at this job posting. It's for a senior data scientist job, advanced risk modeling. And I gotta say the salary on this one is very juicy, 158K to 208K. That's more than I've ever made in a data job. This one actually looks like a very good high paying job. I don't actually know much about this company, but it says they're a health insurance company and it looks like this job is gonna be around risk modeling. So if I knew that I wanted to work for this company or other similar companies in a similar kind of role, then I would wanna work on healthcare and risk projects in my portfolio. So that kind of helps us narrow down the business domain and the types of projects that we should work on in our portfolio. And then if we scroll down under responsibilities, we can see the actual skills that they're looking for so like ML, AI, NLP, LLMs, they have all the acronyms and buzzwords in here, which honestly scares me a little bit. Just see this, look at this. So go look at job postings for the types of companies and roles that you'd like to look for and see what sort of business problems they're solving and what tools they're using. And then that's what you're gonna do in your portfolio. And you're gonna be a perfect match when you apply. Unlike all the other people who are gonna do boring projects like the Titanic data set, you're gonna be miles ahead. If you feel completely lost on how to build your data analytics portfolio and you're just really struggling, check out my 100K data analytics portfolio blueprint. I walk you through in extreme detail how to choose the right projects for your industry, how to choose the right data sets to support those projects, how to set up your GitHub account and how to structure every single project in detail to get you hired fast. The link is in the description below, so check it out. The second Second big thing you need to do to stand out is do something realistic. That means build a project with realistic messy data that actually solves a real business problem. Again, your portfolio is not the time and place to be predicting who survives the Titanic. You need to find a realistic business problem, which you can do by reverse engineering from job postings, what we just talked about. But let's say you have a really good business problem idea for a project that you reverse engineered from a job description, but where the heck are you supposed to find realistic data to work on that? Especially if you're applying to jobs in a very specific niche like healthcare risk analysis, where are you gonna find the perfect data set to do that? And of course, you can do the more old school method like find data on Kaggle or find public data on government websites, but we are in the age of AI and it's time you get creative. You can actually make synthetic data sets with AI for the exact niche and type of project that you wanna work on. All you have to do is a little prompt engineering magic and you can have the perfect data set that looks the exact way you want it for your project. You can get hyper-specific about the industry you're working in, the types of columns you want in your data, what size you want your data set to be, any missing values, allowed values, primary key, foreign key, additional tables that connect to it. The world is literally your oyster with AI 
AI. So stop using generic data sets from Kaggle and actually get creative and put some effort into making a good data set. And I just made an entire video on this and actually experimented between ChatGPT, Claude, and Gemini to see who makes the best data sets. So go watch this after this and steal my prompts. You can have the perfect realistic data sets for your projects. And one last thing here while we're talking about building an actual realistic project, make sure your data set is messy to start out. Because if you're starting out with a super clean data set that's already ready to go, you're not exercising your data cleaning skills and it's not realistic to hiring managers. The third thing you must do is structure your project around impact, not just insights. So that's the difference between showing what you found in your analysis versus what companies should actually do based on what you found in your analysis. So instead of saying email open rates are much lower this month and we don't know why, craft it into an actual business recommendation. Like let's experiment with different subject lines and try to increase open rates. And you have to do the same thing with projects in your portfolio. Yes, you do want to go through your entire method of your project, what you did, what you found, what you learned. But at the very end, you need to end with business recommendations. So you did this entire project and you learned X, Y, Z, who the frick cares? What do you do with that information? Tie back those insights to actual business recommendations and say, if I worked in this business, these are the next steps that I would take. And this is what I would tell all of my stakeholders to do, because that's what you do in the real world. You use data to drive decisions and action, not just look at it and say, oh, that's cool. And not only do you want to have a business recommendation section for each project in your portfolio, but honestly, I would lead with that in an executive summary. At the top of every project in the Read Me page, have an executive summary that highlights the business problem, the solution, the business recommendations, have all the most important information right there at the top summarized and in an executive summary. Because not everyone's gonna read through the entire project and look at all your code and all the insights. People don't care or have time for that. Keep it simple and convince them to hire you in a tiny little executive summary paragraph. If you wanna know how to structure your projects in your portfolio the right way, check out my previous video in this portfolio series. Watch it right here. And if you wanna build the SQL skills from scratch that help you build these projects, check out my big SQL energy courses. You'll also find my exact projects in these courses that you can steal for yourself. I have SQL courses no matter where you are in your journey. I have a free intro, a beginner, an intermediate, and a full bundle if you're all in. Links are in the description. Sending you lots of big data energy. Bye.